So this is what they call the upper gallery? I'm in the Hagia Sophia, one of the oldest structures in Istanbul. Hell, in the world for that matter. And I am in awe. From up here you can kind of get the vastness of how big this place really is. It's huge. These circular stones are where Byzantine emperors were once coronated. Justinian I, Tiberius II, Heraclius, just to name a few. This just in, there are circular stones right here. This is where Byzantine emperors were coronated. Each of these stones represent where they were coronated. These are the actual spots. Once in a lifetime experience. And this structure here is where the Imam would call his people That's to prayer. This is for people who call prayer to the mosque. He is not that person. This guy? Extremely illegal what he just did right there. <laughs> Extremely illegal. If he's Muslim, that's bad. And if he's not, that's even worse. But the amazement keeps hitting me in so many ways. Like this doorway, for instance. Just a marble door, right? Wrong. A lot of big names just walk through that doorway. I just walked through, you see it behind me. Really? Yeah. So, kind of sent chills up my spine. Now, I'm a very hands-on kind of guy. So when I had the opportunity to actually touch some floor tiles laid down during Nero's reign in Rome, I had to. And when I see ancient porphyry in the Hagia Sophia, I don't think twice. Ancient porphyry, that stuff is old and expensive. Very expensive. Finally, we come to a place in the Hagia Sophia where I'm truly astonished by both time and space, past and present, history and legend. The Mirab of the Hagia Sophia. Pointing to Mecca, the Holy Land, this is the direction that we all would be kneeling during prayer if we were Muslim. And this is the staircase the Imam would be praying from. The Hagia Sophia was made in the 800s. This mirab was made in the 19th century. This, this, this altar thing was made a thousand years later than this actual place was built. Insane. And as we conclude our tour to the Hagia Sophia, I come across something rather odd, a column. Not just any column, a sweating column. So basically in that hole of bronze, moisture, everybody's digging for it right now. And um, basically, I guess you, you, you get a wish granted or something like that. And if you don't think I'm putting my finger in there, you're crazy. That did not sound right. Said to be a miracle, even back in the Byzantine times, this column was actually brought from the Temple of Artemis, one of the original seven wonders of the world from the ancient city of Ephesus, which was knocked down when conquered by the Ottoman rule in the late 1400s. It got its name from the beads of moisture it would sweat that came from the cistern below. Captivated by its powers, I gave it a shot. One man, one thumb, and one more. Making one wish that will change his life. Let's see what happens. The sweating. Didn't really get any sweat. I, I was sweating while I was doing that, though, so maybe that's what that means. We'll see. <laughs> that was the Hagia Sophia. Incredible, incredible structure. And, uh,. Right now we're about to catch the tram and hit the Bosphorus cruise, baby. You ready? We'll see you on the boat. So, if you're looking to connect with some of Turkey's deep, rooted history, the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia are certainly two places you gotta see. And if you wanna find some more history, along with a truly amazing view, then the Toriol cruise of the Bosphorus Strait is definitely for you. I mean, everywhere you go in Turkey is gonna have some form of sick history, but a view like this, you can only get here. There are several different versions of this cruise, but I chose the Toriol for one reason. Well, a few. Less stops along the way, an affordable price at 8 US, a good number of scheduled departures, and the fact that they've been running Bosphorus cruises with Toriol for over 20 years now. Enough said. You can buy your tickets at Eminonu, meaning dock in Turkish, and you can see the Toriol double-decker ferry boats lined up on the west side of the Galata Bridge. 
The great thing about these cruises is that they offer lunch, drinks, and some entertainment, and they are big enough so you don't have to sit on anyone's lap. And less stops means you'll be spending a solid hour on the strait leading up to the Black Sea. The other cruises take up to six hours if you want to see the Black Sea. And since we only had one more day in Istanbul, we weren't wasting any time. The view is... I guess it speaks for itself. And Toriol, along with other tourism contracts in Istanbul, offer guides to put a story behind some of the sites. But no need, I enjoy the mystique of not knowing where this castle came from. And I like it that way. Next up, I'm on my own. Our last supper in Istanbul, and the Grand Bazaar beckons. To shop, of course. We just got done with our cruise of the Bosphorus Strait, and according to the plan, we are setting out to one of the largest of several hundred ancient cisterns Istanbul has to offer. But I've seemed to lost my traveling counterpart, the Felix Unger of our traveling odd couple. But believe me, man, I'm no Oscar Madison. All right, so basically what just happened is uh, Cody passed out in the hotel room. So I'm going up to the Basilica Cistern by myself. I'm gonna check it out real quick, come back, hit up some din din. And then uh, last night in Istanbul, man. So I'll see you in the cistern. It seriously did drop like six degrees when I got down here. It's amazing, it's so cool, it's beautiful. Mm. Look at the water, mm. I could swim in it. The Basilica Cistern is the largest cistern what you may know as a well, where water was stored during the Byzantine and later Ottoman empires. Originally built as a basilica in the early Roman Empire, it was reconstructed by Justinian I and filtered water for the great palace of Constantinople and surrounding structures on the first hill, a place of Byzantine royalty during the 600s leading up to the 1400s when it provided water for the Ottomans' Topkapi Palace. Covering over 2,800,000 cubic feet and being able to hold over 100,000 tons of water, this structure is massive to say the least. It is a truly astonishing sight, housing over 300 columns taken from various parts of the Byzantine Empire and leftovers used when originally building the Hagia Sophia. A great place to get away from the busy streets of the city above, the cistern provides a great atmosphere and an amazing natural air conditioning. It really puts you back in time when running water through copper pipes was not an option. I couldn't imagine this massive structure being filled with water, and that's why it is such a sick place to see. The lighting, the sounds of dripping water, that cool air that surrounds you, it really provides for a pretty soothing experience, whether you understand why it's there or not. And there's plenty for you to do down here. You can make a wish, look for Medusa, or just enjoy the scenery. Whatever the case may be, you're certainly in for a sick time. All right, so I know what you're all thinking, like it's not a lot. It's a bunch of columns, water, but uh, it's actually pretty cool. The cooling effect is one of the greatest things about it. Like something like this, like the view, That's really what it's all about right there. Just looking at all the columns that are put together. How they come to form this underground structure. It's pretty crazy actually. All the water rippling, it's a real cool effect. They got fish in here and shit like that, so it's good. I might have spent like 20 minutes in here, not even, but I think it's worth it. We then set out for our final dinner in Istanbul, and I gotta say, we didn't have much time, but we did make the best of it, and we still have a good 15 hours left in this incredible city. We end up on the Galata Bridge, where Ilker suggests we find a restaurant of our choice. Some of the freshest seafood and best examples of Turkish cuisine can be found here, and the Yildizar restaurant is a perfect match for our final dinner. A great view, an impeccable menu, awesome service, and absolutely delicious food. If you're thinking you're gonna see me eat for the next five minutes, you're wrong. I got work to do, and that means waking up and shipping out to the Grand Bazaar. Now everywhere I go, everyone always says, bring me back something, so I do. 
and every country I've been to has its form of Grand Bazaar. But there is only one Grand Bazaar in the world, and that's in Istanbul. The Turks use the word bazaar to describe a market, like this small produce bazaar down the street from our hotel. And the Grand Bazaar is exactly that, a grand market, constructed in 1455 and completed in 1461 by the emperor at the time, Mehmed the Conqueror. Most of the bazaar is all indoors and is grouped by the types of goods being sold. Whatever you need, they got, ranging from jewelry, pottery, spices, carpet, hookahs, etc, etc, and so on and so forth. They seriously have everything, and we did our best of covering all the ground this enormous place has to offer. With more than 58 covered streets, 4,000 shops, 2 mosques, 2 hammams, 4 fountains, and several restaurants and cafes. Today, the bazaar attracts between a quarter to a half a million visitors a day. Yeah, a day. Both local and tourists alike. And if you want to buy something, you better know how to haggle. And if you don't like being constantly pressured into buying something you don't want, then simply keep walking. Or you can do what I do. Engage in a conversation that is totally out of context. That usually keeps him moving. He definitely could have hit me harder than that. Anyway, we got a real treat when we ran into this guy, Mehmet, a young up-and-comer in the carpet game. And when he told us he wanted to show us his shop and that we didn't need to buy anything, we could not refuse. Look, this is the carpet place we have. And here we have, you know, two different carpet quality. First one, it comes killing, which means like this. That blue. This one. And the second one is, it comes, you know, embroidery stuff. They make it first of all killing. Flat figure, then after they put embroidery, like this. Look. In Turkey, every country has some design and modified because there is all handmade. Look, you see? Wow. Two techniques. They make it first of all killing, then after they put embroidery. And third right. one is carpet, which means double knot system. And let me show you wool. Look. Look. All this tree is wool. This is a double knot system with the pile one. And all these three categories yeah, come silk. Yeah, I was reading about that. You know, uh, here is coming silk carpet, like this. Look. Uh, take also this. <laughs> Look. Wow. See? That was pretty well. That is nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. And color is all changed, you see? Yeah. This feel like your home. You are friends. You don't need to buy anything. I am not charging anything. I need to also make you know, some practice about my English. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here. After the break, I say goodbye to Istanbul to see the Aegean coast. Wine tasting and a party boat. Literally.